Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, True Crime Stories. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like button and subscribe so you can hear more. Thanks for stopping by. In my last video that I did on the story of the little boy, the missing child, Kurt Newton, I came across this in the comments. Someone said that the story reminded them of this story of this little boy, and I just thought that I would do some reading about this and see if anyone thought that there might be a similarity to this. This is the story of Simon Wilson, who also went missing in 1975. Now, this is a story from the Toronto Star. Our classmate disappeared without a trace in January of 1975, and we are determined to find out what happened to him. There's a newspaper picture here in an article Searchers calm the sewers for a boy who's been missing for five days. Metro police and volunteers continued their search for nine-year-old Simon Wilson. They went underground into a maze of storm sewers. Children say the sewers are a playground for youngsters in the area, and police believe that Simon may have been playing hide-and-seek. Etobicoke Works Department employees are helping police check the miles of large drains that crisscross the area. The youngster has been missing from his Willow Bridge, Willow Ridge apartment in Rexdale for the last six days. He was last seen leaving school at the Parkfield Public School Wednesday morning. Now this is in Toronto, Canada. I hope I'm saying the word right, Etobicoke or Etobicoke. It's spelled C-O-K-E, but when I listened to the word on the YouTube channel that I was researching, they were pronouncing it Etobicoke. So if I got that wrong and anyone's from that area, please correct me. Uh, I want to make sure I get things right on this. As adults, we look back on our childhood and have fond memories of friends and families. We can also have unpleasant memories. Some of us have traumatic ones. This is one such memory. In January of 1975, I was a nine-year-old student in the fourth grade at Parkfield Public School in Etobicoke. On Thursday, January the 30th, the childhood innocence of those at Parkfield was lost. That morning, while eating breakfast, my mom had the radio on, where we heard that my classmate, Simon Wilson, had vanished on his way home from school the previous day. My mom's face became grim, more so than I had ever seen. When we got to school, the Metropolitan Toronto police cars were in the parking lot. I don't recall any announcement being made, but all of our teachers looked deeply concerned. Throughout the day, most of Simon's classmates and friends were called into the principal's office where we were interviewed by detectives. We were asked questions such as, when was the last time you saw or spoke to Simon? Do you know where he is? Have you had contact from him? Those were some of the questions. Over the next week, our neighborhood was flooded with police cars and volunteers. Parents began to drive their children to and from school, which was unusual in an area where everyone walked. The police mounted unit, the police mounted unit, men and horses, went up and down our streets. Police and volunteers knocked on doors asking to search the properties. The immediate area around Simon's apartment had storm sewers that were not well secured, and children were known to go down into them to play. 
The Toronto Star had pictures of police with tracking dogs walking around the city. A darkness descended over our neighborhood. For the first time in our young lives, our world became a dangerous place. On February the 5th, 1975, the search was called off. No trace of Simon had been found. There were rumors, of course. The main ones seemed to be that a relative had kidnapped him and taken him out of Canada. Adults talked in hushed tones about the possibility that an unspeakable act had occurred to the poor little boy. Regardless of what happened to him, he seemingly vanished into thin air. In December of 2022, I was chatting with three Parkfield classmates. The others will remain anonymous as they did not want to be named. On Facebook, where we were discussing Simon and what had happened to him, we decided to take it upon ourselves to reopen the case and look into this. We googled his name, but there was hardly anything about him. I headed to the library to review microfilm of the old newspapers from that year. I consider myself an amateur historian, and research is something that I enjoy. My friend, a genealogy researcher, took the data we found and did a deep dive. She discovered Simon's father and other relatives had reached out to them. We received some stunning news. One relative claimed that she had been told that he died in an avalanche. This was unlikely to have happened in Toronto, so this was very much a mystery. Brown then reached out to the Toronto Police Department and spoke with a detective. The detective told her that Simon's file had been reviewed earlier that month. Of what happened? Our hope is to find enough information to get them to make the case active again. We implore upon everyone reading this, if you should know anything at all about Simon, to reach out to the Toronto police. A sweet little boy vanished, and we would like to know why. In 2023, there's an update to the story that says nine-year-old Simon Wilson vanished in January of 1975. Um, now, this was written by Craig Wallace who had been a classmate of Simon's. He said, this writer, this man that had gone to school with him, said that when they started looking into this case, there was very little about him. I see a, a page dedicated to him on Web Sleuths. After nine-year-old Simon Wilson was reported missing, police officers searched a futile search for the nine-year-old in the sewers underneath the area where he lived. They searched tunnels and the local creeks, but no sign of him was ever found. So, in these interviews that the police did with these children, this one person who wrote this original article said that they all walked. I don't know how far Simon lived from the school. Did the uh, were there any other children who also lived in that apartment complex where Simon lived, and did they all walk home together? Um, who was the last classmate of his? Maybe that was known to have seen him. Did he go straight to the apartment, or did he say, "I'm going to go do something else"? And what led them to believe that he was abducted by a family member? Was this supposed to have been a father? Was his parents divorced, separated, going through a, a fight over custody? Um, I'm still looking into that. I'm going to listen to this podcast and see if they have anything more to add. Since this friend of his, this classmate of his, wrote this article um, just very recently, within the last couple of years, I'm assuming that he was never found 
a there, there was this part of the story that said there were rumors that he was abducted by a family member and it doesn't go into any detail about who that family member might have been i'm going to assume that this is the the woman that this in the article i i said that this man said that he had a friend who was a researcher and who was doing some who had reached out to the police i'm assuming that this is the same person because they have the same last name so she says that she posted this story in a group of facebook about simon wilson a few people commented including a lady named kathy who was in the sixth grade at the time she mentioned that when we were in his class together a girl in our class was killed by her mom's boyfriend he hit her on the head with an ashtray and she died in each case both children lived at the end of the street in the apartments at the end of willow ridge now the little girl that died um, some people believe was related to Simon Wilson, but later it was determined that they were not related, even though that they were believed to have the same last name. And they believed that her name was Jacqueline Wilson. I believe the answer about what happened to Simon Wilson is out there. Other than what the friends of this young boy, when they were in school together, other than what they've written and what they've searched and looked for, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot that was ever really written about him other than this article in the newspaper. Um, the engineer that was brought in to search the storm sewer tunnels says that they found no traces of the child in the tunnels and they don't believe that he was ever there they don't believe he went missing in those tunnels um they placed men at both entrance that the entrances and exits to the tunnels and they never found anything to indicate Now, some people are accusing the father, and I can't find anything to say why or how they came up with that, other than the fact that when the police, when he was first reported missing, people first started noticing that he was missing, and the father, I don't know if the father reported him or the mother or who it was, but they said that the father told them to search the sewers because he liked to go in there and play. And this is why they focused their search on the sewers. Some people believe the father knew more and was trying to deflect the police in the search away. According to one podcast that I listened to, Ontario Code Cases podcast, they did say that Simon's parents had been separated. Now, whether they were separated at the time of his disappearance was unclear, but I believe that they were. And this led to rumors that someone within Simon's father's family, or maybe the father himself, had taken the child and hid him away someplace in order to get custody of him or in order to take him away from the mother that's just one more part of this story, one more rumor part. They also said that Simon had vanished on his way to school that day. So it wasn't so much that he had skipped school, but probably had been abducted that morning on his way to school. Now, it was only about four months later when this other girl, Tracy Bruni, also went missing after her mother allegedly her mother said that she dropped her off walking and left her in front of the school and went back home so the mother says she dropped her off walked back to their apartment and the child did come home that day she started calling she went back down to the school 
and they reported that the child had never come to school that day. So it's possible that someone was trolling around the outsides of these schools early in the morning watching for children alone and um, finding an opportunity to snatch these children. So another part of this story that I heard in the podcast that I listened to was that Simon's parents were both from Belfast, and it was rumored that they thought that people were suggesting that maybe since the parents were separated, that the father had sent the child to Belfast and that he was being raised there by maybe some of the father's family or relatives. Now, this was never proven, but it was never disproven. It's possible that Simon's out there somewhere and grew up not knowing that he was really uh, considered missing, but was just sent to live with relatives. Um, His father had told police that his son had found a fort in the sewers and that he thought that that was probably where he had skipped school that day and ran and was down in there playing. This is the reason the police focused on these sewers. And they didn't really do a deep investigation into anything else. There was one other part of this was that Simon was thought to have skipped school two days in a row the day bef- the two days before he, he disappeared. Now, his mother said that she sent him to school and that she was not aware that he had not been at school. But the principal later said that a man had called saying that he was Simon's father and that Simon wouldn't be in school those days. Now, I couldn't find anything whether or not the father said that, yes, that was me. And yes, Simon had missed school those two days. Or if this was some other man, maybe someone was meeting up with Simon those mornings as he was walking by himself to school. I don't know. This was part of the story that was very unclear. And if Simon's father was the one that called the called the school and said he wouldn't be there those days, what was the reason? And why didn't the mother know about that? A lot of people believe and speculate that the whole family knew where Simon was and that they were just because the parents were separated and maybe the mother agreed to let the father take the child. I don't know why they would make up this whole story about him going missing and have the police involved. There were a lot of rumors, but there was never really any evidence of anything. I don't think that there was ever anyone charged or arrested, and I don't really even think there was anyone really questioned. But as time went on and some more things started happening and just it was wondered if he may have been the victim of a serial killer or a child abduction uh, ring or possibly one person. But there was really not much else to go on. So to wrap up his story, I'll just say he his schoolmates years later got together and started doing some investigation They gathered the police records, what they could get. They tried to talk to anyone who would talk to them about the case and tried to reopen it as a cold case. And I don't know that they've had any solution to that. There's nothing to indicate that they've come up with anything, you know, that could have happened to him. And so all these years later, it's just a cold case, a disappearance of a young boy. And um, I'll just wrap this video up and say the next story that I'm going to do is about a little girl who ended up murdered within this same town in the same year. Now, this was the reason why people started to question, is there something more going on here? This was also the same year that Kurt Newton went missing, about two hours away in Maine. And people wondered if it was related, if, if this person could possibly, who, who may have taken Simon, could have been the same person responsible for the murder of this other child and also may have taken Kurt. 
I don't know. There's nothing to link them other than the fact that this is all within one area. And other than that, there's been no kind of uh, evidence of what happened to any of these kids. So I hope you'll come back and watch the next video about Tracy Bruni. Thanks for watching.